हेलो फ्रेंड लेट स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर लास्ट उइक न्यूज 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 इम्पर्टेंट न्यूज सो फार्ष्ट इम्पर्टेंट निज़ फ्रम सेप्टेम्बर लास्ट उइक इज आवार प्राइम मिनिस्टर मिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी इनगरेटेड थार्टी सिक्स नैशनल गेम्स इन गुजराट ऑन सेप्टेम्बर टोटी एट सो दिस टाइम गुजराट इज होस्टिंग थार्टी सिक्स नैशनल गेम्स एंड थार्टी फिफ्थ नैशनल गेम्स was hosted by kerala so a beautiful the the game the game was started with a beautiful opening inaugurate inauguration ceremony with a speech of our prime minister so let's see a glance of the inauguration ceremony very quickly me my colleague anil thomas it's bright and it's very sunny and that's exactly the sort of atmosphere The inauguration ceremony was hosted in the Narendra Modi Stadium in Motera. This is the mascot lion of 36th National Games. Let's hear from our Prime Minister. वैसे हमारे अत्यंत प्रिय और सम्माननीय प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी को आइए हर्ष ध्वनि से उनके विशिष्ट संबोधन के लिए और 36वें नेशनल गेम्स का शुभारंभ करने के लिए इस भक्त स्टेडियम में बधाने का निमंत्रण देते हैं।
माता की भारत माता की इस भव्य आयोजन में हमारे साथ उपस्थित गुजरात के गवर्नर आचार्य देवव्रत जी हमारे लोकप्रिय मुख्यमंत्री भूपेंद्र भाई संसद के मेरे साथी सी आर पाटिल भारत सरकार में मंत्री श्री अनुराग जी राज्य के मंत्री हर संघवी जी मेयर किरीट भाई खेल संस्थाओं के प्रतिनिधिगण और देश भर से यहां जुटे मेरे युवा खिलाड़ियों आप सभी का बहुत बहुत स्वागत है अभिनंदन है ये दृश्य ये तस्वीर ये माहौल शब्दों से परे है विश्व का सबसे बड़ा स्टेडियम विश्व का इतना युवा देश और देश का सबसे बड़ा खेल उत्सव जब आयोजन इतना अद्भुत और अद्वितीय हो तो उसकी ऊर्जा ऐसी ही असाधारण होगी देश के 36 राज्यों से 7000 से ज्यादा एथलेट्स 15000 से ज्यादा प्रतिभागी पैंतीस हजार से ज्यादा कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी और स्कूलों की सहभागिता और पचास लाख से ज्यादा स्टूडेंट्स का नेशनल गेम से सीधा जुड़ा यह अद्भुत है यह भूतपूर्व है नेशनल गेम्स का एंथम जुड़ेगा इंडिया जीतेगा इंडिया मैं कहूंगा जुड़ेगा इंडिया आप बोलिए जीतेगा इंडिया जुड़ेगा इंडिया जुड़ेगा इंडिया ये शब्द ये भाव आज आसमान में गुंज रहा है आपका उत्साह आज आपके चेहरों पर चमक रहा है ये चमक आगाज है खेल की दुनिया के आने वाले सुनहरे भविष्य के लिए नेशनल गेम्स का ये प्लेटफॉर्म आप सभी के लिए एक नया लॉन्चिंग पैड का काम करेगा मैं इन खेलों में शामिल हो रहे सभी खिलाड़ियों को मेरी तरफ से बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं देता हूं साथियों मैं आज गुजरात के लोगों की भी सराहना करता हूं जिन्होंने बहुत ही कम समय में इस भव्य आयोजन के लिए सारी व्यवस्थाएं की ये गुजरात का सामर्थ्य है 
यहां के लोगों का सामर्थ्य है लेकिन साथियों अगर आपको कहीं कमी महसूस हो कहीं कोई असुविधा महसूस हो तो उसके लिए मैं गुजराती के नाते आप सबसे एडवांस में क्षमा मांग लेता हूं कल अहमदाबाद में जिस तरह का शानदार भव्य ड्रोन शो हुआ वो देखकर तो हर कोई अचंभित है गर्व से भरा है टेक्नोलॉजी का ऐसा सदा हुआ इस्तेमाल ड्रोन की तरह ही गुजरात को भारत को नई ऊंचाइयों पर ले जाएगा यहां जो पहले नेशनल स्पोर्ट्स कॉन्क्लेव का आयोजन किया गया उसकी सफलता की भी बहुत चर्चा हो रही है इन सारे प्रयासों के लिए मैं मुख्यमंत्री श्रीमान भूपेंद्र भाई पटेल और उनकी पूरी टीम की भी पूरी पूरी प्रशंसा करता हूं अभी कुछ दिन पहले नेशनल गेम्स का ऑफिशियल मैस्कोट सावज भी लॉन्च हुआ है गिर के शेरों को प्रदर्शित करता शुभांकर सावज भारत के युवाओं के मिजाज को दिखाता है नीडर होकर मैदान में उतरने के जुनून को दिखाता है ये वैश्विक परिदृश्य में तेजी से उभरते भारत के सामर्थ्य का भी प्रतीक है साथियों आज आप यहां जिस स्टेडियम में जिस स्पोर्ट्स कॉम्प्लेक्स में ओके सो थर्टी सिक्स नेशनल गेम्स ग्लिम्सेस फ्रॉम द ओपनिंग सेरेमोनी ए स्पेक्टैकुलर ओपनिंग सेरेमोनी हाईलाइटिंग द कंट्रीज डिजायर to emerge as a soft power in sport and gujarat superb organizational skill marked the formal inauguration of the 36th national games at the narendra modi stadium in ahmedabad on thursday so this is the fire cracking inauguration ceremony of 36th national games okay and this is the state wise flag bearing march okay and all the biggest sports persons like pv sindhu niraj chopra gagan narang mirabai chanu ravi kumar and onju babi george the famous sports persons are present in the inauguration ceremony also there are garba performance which is a special dance in gujarat okay so it's a spectacular opening ceremony okay now move to next topic from the september last week newspapers
ओके आजाद फ्लोट्स पार्टी वोज इट विल बी डेमोक्रेटिक एंड इंडिपेंडेंट इन डिसीजन सो फाइनली आफ्टर लिविंग कांग्रेस आफ्टर नियरली फोर डिकेट्स फाइनली गुलाम नबी आजाद फ्लोट्स हिज न्यू पार्टी एंड द नेम ऑफ हिज न्यू पार्टी इज डेमोक्रेटिक आजाद पार्टी एंड ही क्लैरिफाइज दैट द नेम आजाद इज नॉट रिलेटेड टू हिज नेम गुलाम नबी आजाद ओके सो लेट लिसन फ्रॉम गुलाम नबी आजाद गुलाम नबी आजाद फ्लोट्स न्यू पार्टी नेम्स इट एज डेमोक्रेटिक आजाद पार्टी ओके लेट्स लिसन फ्रॉम हिम डायरेक्टली भाई ये पहले 23 तारीख को ही अनाउंस करना चाहता था फिर देखा कि शराब है तो हमने सोचा कि नवरात्रि के पहले शुभ अवसर पर हम भी एक नई शुरुआत करें तो पार्टी का नाम है डेमोक्रेटिक आजाद पार्टी आजाद का ये मत समझे गुलाम नबी आजाद डेमोक्रेसी डेमोक्रेटिक के लिए है पूरी स्वतंत्र होगी जिसका मैंने उल्लेख पहले किया कि अपनी सोच होगी किसी भी पार्टी से किसी भी लीडर से किसी भी ग्रुप से प्रभावित नहीं होगी अपनी सोच होगी और आजाद रहेगी आजाद मीन स्वतंत्र इंडिपेंडेंट ओके ओके मूव टू नेक्स्ट टॉपिक मेक इन इंडिया कंप्लीट्स एट इयर्स एनुअल एफ डी आई डबल्स टू यू एस डी एटी थ्री बिलियन सो एट इयर मेक इन इंडिया कम्प्लीट्स मेक इन इंडिया स्कीम कम्प्लीट्स एट इयर्स एनुअल फॉरन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट डबल्स टू यू एस डी सो वाइल लॉन्च आफ्टर लॉन्चिंग द मेक इट मेक इन इंडिया स्कीम मेक इन इंडिया मीन्स द प्रोडक्ट विच इज Built in India, there will be maximum part will be from India itself. Okay, so that is make in India. So we will be self-dependent. That is the main theme of make in India, and this make in India directly attract foreign direct investment, and the amount of foreign direct investment is increasing year by year. Ah, okay, so. Make in India the flagship program of Government of India that aspires to facilitate investment, foster innovation, enhance skill development, and build best-in-class manufacturing infra infrastructure. Completes eight years of path-breaking reforms on 25th September 2022, launched in 2014 under the dynamic leadership of Honorable Prime Ministers. Okay. Now some important point. has discussed here related to make in india and foreign direct investment i will tell you first is like production linked incentive production linked incentive scheme that is also a government of india scheme launched on 2020 2021 what is the thing behind this means foreign foreign investors will invest on the electronics sector mainly focusing on electronics and information technology sectors that is production link in means means when whenever a foreign investor of or a foreign businessman want to start want to install their plant in india 
in electronics and software uh, telecommunication sector then government of india will provide an incentive to that foreign investor so that they can easily start their uh, their production in our country okay means government of india will give incentive to to the foreign investor as well as domestic investor also in the electronics and telecommunication and software sector that is production link incentive so pli scheme across 14 key manufacturing sector was launched in 2020-21 as a big boost to make it india in india initiative okay so what is making a production link incentive at a at a glance i will show you so production link incentive scheme for large scale electronics manufacturing domestic electronics hardware manufacturing sector faces lack of level playing field that is competing nations the sector suffers disability around 8.5 to 11 percent on account of lack of adequate infrastructure domestic supply chain logistic high cost finance inadequate availability of quality power limited design capabilities and focus on r and d by the industry and inadequacy in skill development okay so vision of national policy of electronics 2019 is to position india as a global hub for electronic system design and manufacturing by encouraging and driving capabilities in the country for developing core components and creating an enabling environment for the industry to compete globally so come and invest in india in electronics and communication sector government will give you some incentive so that in future in near future india become a global hub for electronic system design and manufacturing okay that is the main funda behind production link incentive scheme come and invest in india next important point discussed here is the national single window system has been soft launched in september 2021 to improve the ease of doing business by providing a single digital platform to investor for approval and clearance so whenever a investor come in india to invest in any sector in previous days he has to move from this window to those on that window from this window to that window now there will be only a single window where online window where the 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 businessman or the foreign investor will go and easily they can invest in our country and start their production that is national single window system okay so what is this i'll show you so this is the portal of department of promotion in industry and internal trade national single window system so what is our prime minister saying we are laying a red carpet for all global companies to come and establish their presence in india very few countries will offer the kind of opportunities india does today okay so it's a very simple online portal national okay so let's visit so know your approval view all approval so if you click on to know your approval so a page is has opened center continue with center now continue with state so if you want to continue with center then click here and there are some steps 1 2 3 4 steps first is registration then business activity detail foreign investment detail project land detail okay just filling this four step you will be registered and you will get the approval to start your business start your investment in our country okay very easy system that is national single window system okay next important point discussed here is the government has also launched program for multimodal connectivity to manufacturing zones in the country called the prime minister goti shakti program which will ensure logistical efficiency is business operation through the creation of infrastructure that improves connectivity okay so whatever required for easy investment by the foreign investor will ha have have done by our government okay just i have discussed national single window system i have discussed about the 
production link incentive scheme similarly government has launched this this scheme that is prime ministers goti shakti program now what is goti shakti program logistical efficiency increase logistical efficiency means movement of transportation transportation means rail road plane ship okay easy movement of goods through transportation so what is i'll sh i'll show you this is the website of department of promotion industry and internal trade so they have discussed about pm goti shakti so pm goti shakti national master plan for multimodal connectivity to various economic zones pm goti shakti national master plan was launched on 13 october 2021 for providing multimodal connectivity infrastructure to various economic zone cabinet committee on economic affairs accorded approval for the implementation of pm goti shakti national national master plan so what are the seven engines so pm goti shakti is a trans formative approach for economic growth and sustainable development the approach is driven by seven engines namely railway road port waterway airport mass transport and logistical infrastructure mainly focusing of improvement and modification of this seven sector all seven engines will pull forward the economy of unison these engines are supported by the complementary roles of energy transmission it communication bulk water and sewerage and social infrastructure okay now and last important point discussed here is the one district one product initiative is another manifestation of the make in india vision okay one district one product means government has indicated okay pointed each district for their unique product okay and wh what is the need behind this so that investors will easily can invest on this this district on this product okay so it will be easy for choosing the district for investment so one district one product what is this so ministry of food processing industries mainly focusing on agriculture okay so this district is is uh, famous for this production okay it will help in invest investment in 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 production uh, houses building production so one district one product product digital gis map the this scheme adopts one district one product approach to reap the benefit of scale in terms of procurement of inputs availing common service and marketing product marketing product odop for the scheme will provide the framework for value chain development and align align of support infrastructure there may be more than one cluster of odop product in one district there may be a cluster of odop product consisting more than one adjacent district in a state okay so now i'll show you government of india has listed one district one product district wise so revised list of one district one product total 713 district of 35 state and ut have been listed out okay so like from andaman nicobar south andaman district famous for marine and fish product nicobar coconut middle north andaman coconut okay in this way then andhra each district for each okay in this way, arunachal then assam in this way total 713 district from 35 state and union territory have listed here it will be easy for government for pro procurement of agriculture product also for investment okay so this is the this is the total discussion now i will show you about the foreign direct investment total amount in in the, in the last year is 83 billion so i i, I have make a table to show you year wise foreign direct investment so in 1819 in only 62 billion dollar was the foreign direct investment then 1920 74 2021 20, 81 and 21 22 80 3.5 so in foreign direct investment is increasing year by year and what is which is a very good positive sign okay now month wise means in this year month wise i have also prepared fdi in the indian equity market so in july 5000 crore august 51000 crore september 12000 crore okay so month wise this is the foreign direct investment in the indian equity market
ओके ओके मूव टू नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इन ए फास्ट स्टैच्यू बेंच केसेस बीम्ड लाइव ऑन यूट्यूब सो सुप्रीम कोर्ट स्टार्टेड हियरिंग इन लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग थ्रू यूट्यूब ओके एक्चुअली दिस दिस हैज बीन पास दिस ऑर्डर रिगार्डिंग द लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट हियरिंग हैज बीन पास इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन इन द टाइम ऑफ देन चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया दीपक मिश्रा ओके and finally it started it live streaming supreme court live streaming uh, through youtube from 27 september 2022 and they have also said that the supreme court collegium also said that very soon they will have their own platform through which they will live streaming the supreme court hearing now several state high court like gujarat high court chatisgarh high court already they have their live streaming facilities now supreme court also start their live streaming okay so i will show you in a fast live streaming of supreme court hearing so which is the first case uh, which is live streamed in youtube that is the maharashtra political crisis between sindhe and uh, the uddhav thakre for the first time the supreme court went live on tuesday as the hearing of the case scheduled to be live stream during the day could be seen online of the three case scheduled to be live stream one of the case was from maharashtra team uddhav thakre against team eknath shinde amit ro over symbol of shivsena who owns the symbol of shivsena with the election commission already involved in the matter to lawyer kapil sibal could be seen making arguments this was the second hearing that was broadcast live okay so i will show you the live broadcast also now in 2018 chief justice of india at the time dipak mishra had passed the landmark ruling on september 27 on the live telecast for important proceedings saying sunlight is the best disinfectant okay so look at a visual from supreme court live hearing so so Was that the main this is the Supreme Court Collegium, including, including the Chief Justice U. U. Lalit sitting here, and look at Kapil Sibal and Abhishek Manu Singhvi is arguing for the Uddhav Thakre and the lawyers. representing the eknath shinde department the eknath shinde government the iis by them okay yes, yes. kapil sibal uh, and Ob abhishek manu singh the, the two the senior most the lawyer in supreme court the impression is sort to be given to your doctors is that if this iis held then the whole matter might as well be heard which is completely wrong because as far as this iis is concerned the narrow scope is and what they are seeking to confuse now through online you can see through this website that is this website main.sci.gov.in okay here you can see the live hearing so clicking through it you can see the live hearing on youtube minimum ages sir i said the thing i'm planning it is changing so it's changing One one thing for the government agency. Okay, this is court three, court five, court three, court four, court one, court two, court three. Okay, so live stream, live hearing, you can see. Now already there are several state high court already have their facilities of live streaming, like Gujarat High Court, Jharkhand High Court, 
कर्नाटका हाईकोर्ट मध्य प्रदेश हाईकोर्ट ओडिशा हाईकोर्ट एंड पाटना हाईकोर्ट दे हैव देयर लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग फैसिलिटीज ऑलरेडी हैव देयर ओके मूव टू नेक्स्ट टॉपिक ओके सो अप्रोच टू डेमोक्रेसी ह्यूमैन राइट्स इज कंट्री स्पेसिफिक जयशंकर सो उई नो दैट आवार एक्सटर्नल एफेयर्स मिनिस्टर जयशंकर इज इन यूनिटेड इज इन निर्क टू एटेंड द यूनिटेड नेशन जेनरल एसेंब्ली एंड यूनिटेड नेशन सिक्यूरिटी काउन्सिल मीटिंग आफ्टर इन द सड लाइन अफ द यूनिटेड नेशन मीटिंग देर इज ए पार्सनल डिसकाशन बिटुईन द our external affairs minister and secretary of state united state mr antony blinken okay so they discussed about their bilateral trading between india america defense trading between india america indo pacific region trading and finally they have a press conference okay so i will show you a glance of press conference between the of the, of these two leaders ओके वेल गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन मिस्टर मिनिस्टर माय फ्रेंड वेलकम बैक टू वाशिंगटन इट इज ऑलवेज अ प्लेजर टू मीट मिनिस्टर शंकर वेदर इट्स हियर इन न्यूयॉर्क इन दिल्ली मेलबर्न बाली और एनीवेयर एल्स and i think our own conversations um deep extended conversations that have taken it is uh, really a great pleasure to join secretary blinken uh, at this media event uh, at the conclusion of what i can honestly say is a very productive morning of discussions uh i was last here in april uh, and obviously a lot of things in the world have changed since then uh while we have spent uh, uh quite some time this morning uh, i thank the secretary and his wife for hosting us yesterday at a working dinner uh, this was really a very gracious gesture and i think uh, an occasion that both of us put to good use obviously a large part of our deliberations uh, today were devoted to the strengthening of our bilateral relationship uh most of you would readily understand that it has grown very significantly uh in scope and depth over the last few years we engage each other uh, across pretty much every domain and the quality of our cooperation as indeed of our conversations have steadily improved in today's meeting uh, we discussed our political coordination working together in plurilateral and multilateral formats and exchanging assessments and uh, uh on uh, collaborating on important uh, regional issues and global challenges i would specifically mention the ukraine conflict and the indo pacific situation in that regard i share with uh, i shared with uh, secretary blinken my experience of interactions during the un general assembly about the deep anxieties in the global south on fuel on food on fertilizers uh, the increasing salience of green growth digital development and affordable health is today very very evident we must not let current developments jeopardize agenda 2030 on sdgs or to deflect us from climate action and climate justice commitments our cooperation in different bilateral domains is progressing vigorously uh, naturally secretary blinken and i did a comprehensive now i will i will directly take you a a question from a news reporter regarding the sanction on russia and defense purchase from russia by india and whatever what india think about defense purchase from united states rather from russia and see the reply given by our Talk our external him. ministers but separately i met uh, defense secretary austin and commerce secretary raimondo to review that if i may i seen several reported uh, leaks in the nord stream pipeline system uh, that germany has said could be an act of sabotage 
ओके सो द रिपोर्टर फार्स्ट आस्क ब्लिंक एन अबाउट द नर्डिक स्ट्रीम पाइपलैन द पाइपलैन थ्रु हुईच राशिया सप्लाइज गैस टू यूरोप नाउ देर आर सेवर ए लिक्स हैव बीन फाउंड एंड द पाइपलैन हुईच इज इन साइड द बाल्टिक सी रान थ्रु द बाल्टिक सी व्हाट एवर हाउ द लिक्स हैव बीन फॉर्मड वेदर इट इज इट इज एनी सैपोटेज फ्रॉम रशिया और नॉट दिस क्वेश्चन हैज आस्कड बाय द रिपोर्टर टू ब्लिंक एन एंड देन ही आस्कड जयशंकर अबाउट द डिफेंस पार्चेज फ्रॉम यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स रेदर फ्रॉम रशिया Okay. What's the US assessment of what we're seeing there particularly given Russian previous Russian moves to curtail gas supplies and can you speak a little bit more broadly to the pressure that Europe is coming on coming under as winter and a potential energy crisis looms uh and uh external affairs minister Jay Shankar thanks for taking our questions first I'm wondering if you could offer India's perspective on US efforts to implement a global price cap on Russian energy would india consider joining that kind of price cap mechanism and do you see it as potentially a way for india as well as well as other countries in the global south uh to get more leverage and negotiate even cheaper prices for fuel uh and just a second question if i may uh, can you talk a little bit about india's plans going forward uh, for military hardware and equipment given the sanctions that the us and others are putting on Uh, Russian industry and given India's historic reliance on Russian technology uh, how is India trying to head off challenges related to Russia being potentially unable to service that equipment going forward as a result of sanctions can Russia still fulfill all of India's requirements and will India look at perhaps more purchases of say American or Israeli military equipment thank you Ian thanks very much um on the question was a G7 Uh, initiative uh, now you have to understand uh, that uh, in the last few months uh, the energy markets are already under very great stress uh, countries in the global south uh, have found it difficult to compete for uh, limited energy uh, not just in terms of pricing escalating pricing but often uh, in terms of availability uh there are tenders countries have had tenders for which they don't even get a reply from uh, from suppliers so our concern right now is that energy markets already under stress must soften up uh we would uh, judge any situation frankly by how it affects us and other countries of the global south because as i communicated to the secretary there is a very very deep concern uh, in among developing countries uh, about uh, how their energy security needs are addressed or not uh, on the military equipment uh, to the best of my knowledge uh, I, do, i don't think uh, in recent months we have faced any particular problems in terms of uh, servicing uh, uh, and uh, spare parts supply of equipment that we have uh, got in the past from russia uh, you know whether we uh, where we get our uh, military equipment and platforms from that's not an issue honestly which is a new issue or a issue which has particularly changed uh, uh, because of uh, geopolitical tensions i think we look at uh, possibilities across the world Uh, we look at the quality of technology the quality of capability the terms on which uh, that particular equipment is offered and we exercise a choice which we believe is in our national interest now uh, in in if you if you were to look at the last 15 years for example you can see uh, that uh, we have actually uh, procured a lot from the united states uh, uh, if you but to consider for example aircraft the C17 the C130 the P8 or the Apache helicopter or the Chinook so uh, or the howitzers the M777 howitzers we have done so from France I mean we bought recently the Rafale aircraft we have done so from Israel so we have a tradition of multi sourcing uh, and uh, you know for us uh, how to get the optimal uh, deal from a competitive situation Uh, is really uh, what what uh, uh, this is all about okay very good reply to the journalist also uh, jayashankar raised the issue of visa 
delaying visa de, par, delaying for visa permission to the indian student indian in, uh, indian serviceman okay to us okay also raised the issue by jay shankar move to next topic sabotage suspected after leaks in russia europe gas pipeline so just i have talked about the russia europe gas pipeline which is called nordic stream okay so the gas pipelines actually looks like this so from russia through this under the baltic sea the pipeline come to germany okay and germany stored the gas and through germany other countries of europe get the get the gas supplied from russia there are two pipelines run under baltic sea okay so what is the news russia's nord stream gas pipelines to europe suffers mysterious leaks whether it is sabotage or whether it is a natural leaks okay the investigation is going on nord stream 1 and nord stream 2 key gas pipelines between russia and europe have sprung large leaks within hours of each other sparking fears of deliberate sabotage okay so look at the video the gas is emerging upward through the sea baltic sea So this is the picture taken from a helicopter of the on the surface of sea the gas is leaking and em emitting upward okay move to next topic center extend free ration scheme for 3 months so previously center is giving free ration okay and the date uh, and the last date was was september 30 but center after the receiving many application from the state governments center finally agree to extend the free ration scheme uh, extend up to another three month means october november december it will extend it up to december 31st so the union government has extended pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana for another three months from october 1 this will allow, allow beneficiaries under the national food security act to continue to get 5 kg of food grain per person per month per person per month 5 kg of food grain including rice wheat dal etc the decision was taken at a cabinet meeting here on wednesday this would help the poor and vulnerable section in the festive season okay now the scheme has been operation since april 2020 during the time of lo corona covid 19 lockdown okay name is pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana very good next is Eastern commander commands ex chief Anil Chauhan is chief of defense staff. So we have our new chief of defense staff. He is the successor of Bipin Rawat. Bipin Rawat was the first chief of defense staff. Now we have our new chief of defense staff. His name is Lieutenant General Anil Chauhan. Okay. He is ex chief. He is already a retired person. So the government on Tuesday appointed Lieutenant General Alin Chauhan retired former General Office Commanding in Chief Eastern Army Commander as the Chief of Defense Staff. The post has been vacant since the death of the country's first 
chief of defense staff general bipin rawat in a helicopter crash in 2021 okay so this is the news he is our new chief of defense staff and a general news general knowledge regarding the chief of defense staff post is the upper age limit of chief of defense staff is not more than 62 years a age so after re retirement he is maximum have having 2 years to remain as a chief of defense staff okay move to next topic cabinet nod nod means approved for proposal to redevelop three railway station so at the cost of 10000 crore government of india is going to redevelopment redeveloped three railway station that is new delhi ahmedabad and mumbai chhatrapati shivaji terminals so look at the new the future future looks of this railway station i will show you so future is here of what new delhi ahmedabad and mumbai railway station will look like after 10000 crore revamp so this is the top view future top view of new delhi railway station and two dome the there is two dome so also they have published a video from minister of railway regarding the new future look of new delhi railway station look at the video now look at the future of this is the future look of new delhi station now look at the future look of ahmedabad railway station also they have published a video minister of railway future looks of ahmedabad railway station and this is the future look of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj terminus in mumbai future look okay so total cost of redevelopment of this three railway station is 10000 crore okay move to next topic UNESCO list 50 iconic indian textiles okay so unesco heritage giving the status of heritage of 50 iconic indian textiles so what are the 50 iconic indian textiles i'll i'll give you the name so 
so what are some important textile craft listed like toda embroidery and sunguri from tamil nadu himru webs from hyderabad bandha tie from odisha kunbi from goa mashru from gujarat himru maharashtra garar korial from west bengal ilkal and lambadi karnataka okay khes from haryana chamba from himachal pradesh thigma from ladakh awad from varanasi these are the some of example of textile crafts listed as a unesco cultural heritage so there are several types of heritage like national park heritage okay cultural heritage so these are listed in cultural heritage so we have already total 40 number of unesco world heritage site in our country okay total 40 world heritage site in our country out of 40 32s are national park and seven numbers are cultural and one is mixed so so so, so cultural is 32 unesco world heritage site in india cultural is 32 number like agra fort ajanta caves okay so buddhist so these are the cultural world heritage sites like khajuraho temple in madhya pradesh mount uh, railways of india darjeeling himalayan kutub minars okay so total 32 number victoria goth art in mumbai so the total 32 numbers of cultural heritage then natural heritage are seven numbers by unesco like great himalayan national park kajiranga keolado in rajasthan manos in assam nanda devi in uttarakhand sundarban in west bengal western ghat and one is mixed mixed mean cultural plus uh, natural that is kanchanjunga national park shikim it is cultural because it is uh, cultural because there is a tribe the, there is a tribe and their language is protected by unesco and natural because this is a natural national park okay that that's why it is it is called mixed okay move to next topic and last topic draft telecommunication bill so what is the reason behind this bill i'll tell you because suppose airtel geo vodafone these are these are uh, your uh, telecommunication service provider okay so but they are also offering voice calls and sms facilities like 100 sms freeze or 1000 uh, sms freeze or voice calls but but we are not using their voice call and their messaging uh, system rather we are using external applications like whatsapp google duo google meet messengers okay we are using the outside application which is also called ott over the top this whatsapp meet duo messenger this is also includes in the ott platform okay so what their allegation what the telecom service provider allegation is that we are not benefiting from whatsapp from uh, meet from duo we are pro people are using our internet to use whatsapp but we are not getting any benefit because people are not using voice calls and sms okay this is the first reason number two is we are receiving continuously spam calls dangerous calls okay we can only see the numbers but we cannot identify the people behind the call so from now when a, whoever will call you number along with the name of the people or the name of the registered sim will will show you in the mobile phone with their address also that is the draft telecommunication bill 2022 okay so ministry of communication released a draft of indian telecommunication bill 22 last week for public comment so they have released the draft now public will give their comment and after that the final bill will be passed from the parliament okay so how does the draft communication bill affect the ott communication service the ott communication service refer to service the, that provide real time person to person telecommunication service some popular example of this include message messaging platform like whatsapp telegram signal messenger duo google meet 
this platform use the network infrastructure of telecom service provider like Airtel, Vodafone and Jio and provide features that compete with telecommunication service such as voice calls and SMS service. Telecom service provider alleged that these future features result in a double whammy for them as they cut into their sources of revenue while not having to deal with infrastructure and licensing cost they have to undertake. Okay. So, the current draft bill expands the definition of telecommunication service to include OTT communication service. Means the WhatsApp, the Google Meet Duo will also have to get license, will have to go through KYC. Okay, KYC like Airtel, what, what the telecom provider, the service provider are doing so that the telecom service provider also get some benefit from them. Okay, there should be a process. Okay, also to curtail the ever increasing incident of spam calls and fraud the draft bill proposed that the identify the of the person communicating using any form of telecommunication service shall be available to the user receiving such communication this would mean that unlike now where only the phone number of the person making the communication is displayed going forward the name of the person would also be displayed okay that is the draft form of telecommunication bill 2022 okay so this is the total discussion from the last week of september if you like my discussion please like the video subscribe my channel we will meet tomorrow